All right, this is best drag. <laughs> <laughs> what the f was that? Why are you laughing? <laughs> Not this is your best drag, sis. <laughs> we were told something else. I'll get into the tea, girl. Oh my god, I mean, this is the video that nobody asked for, the content literally nobody asked for, but we're gonna give it to them anyway, right? Laganja, you ready to cringe on our looks from Drag Race like many moons ago? I can't even believe we're about to do this, but come on, let's take a chasse down memory lane. <laughs> chasse down the runway. Now, Laganja, how has it been since Drag Race Season 6? Since season six, let's just say I have learned a lot, but your girl is still a bootleg, okay? So I can't wait to hear your critiques. I know you're gonna help me and well, get me together. Bootleg opinions. Laganja, I know you're a budget queen just like I am, and I know we both like smelling delicious, which is why I wanna let you know something called Scentbird. Scentbird, what's that? Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that allows you to shop from over 600 brands. And you get a 30-day subscription, so you don't have to buy the whole bottle. How amazing is that? You get to choose what you want for just $16, so there are no surprises or mystery fragrances. Plus, it is a flexible subscription, so you can skip a month without penalties. So if you're greedy like me, you can pick up to two to three fragrances. What, honey? How do I get started? Good question. All you gotta do is take the Scentbird pop quiz, and then it helps pick your favorite scent. And today I have Gucci's Gucci Bloom, Confessions of a Rebel, Let's Be Real, and oh, pick Sugar Berry Blast. And I picked these three because they're sweet, strong, like an independent woman like me. Girl, let me sign up. You should. Girl, can you believe they also have brands like DKNY and, oh my gosh, my favorite, Versace. I know, girl, that's why I told you about it, girl. Versace, your favorite brand. Let's spread the love. And oh, these are 100% authentic. All you gotta do is twist and Spray, baby, mmm. Are you sure we should tell our viewers about this? I'm done. Now, Sasha, away to the link in the description and use my code for 30% off and that's just $11 for your first month. Ooh, girl, I can smell you all the way across the country. I'm telling you, girl, Scentbird is the tea. I don't have much critiques, actually. I think, most importantly, I think throughout all this process, it's just to cringe at each other because I think that I'm gonna look at my photos and say, wow, Ma'am, you did terrible. But I think the most important thing that going out of Drag Race is that you learn, you give, and also you grow as a person, right? Look, if you can't laugh at yourself, how in the hell are you gonna laugh at everybody else? Can I get an amen? Amen, or should I say gay men? Now, I think I also wanna say that I cringe and feel uncomfortable whenever I see things of myself like, I don't watch any bootleg opinions of myself, even from last week, because I feel like as people, we continue to grow. And when we continue to grow, we look at ourselves in the past and we're just like, Ugh. I mean, we think we're amazing at the moment that we're in, but we can be more amazing. I agree, sis, absolutely. So this is your promo look, and girl, you look Snatch, baby! Body, yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. And I have to let you know, and I'm sure many people have said this before, that the season six promo look from Drag Race is the best one there is. Am I wrong? I have to agree, sis. I still, all these years later, love this look. Now, I did find one critique because my eyebrows were like all the way up here, and you know, I don't really like that no more. I like to have a natural sitting brow. But overall, mama, the hair was laid, the body was correct. I love all the geometric shapes that are happening. I love the extra long nails. I think the body looks good. I mean, yeah, I still totally stand by this look. And of course, the classic pose. Exactly, you got the pop of pink to pop from the black, honey. And also the nails, the signature Laganja, honey. All right. <laughs> I hate this promo look, girl. I look crazy. I don't think so. <laughs> okay, next is my promo look from season 10. I believe yours was black, right? So our theme was neon. And girl, I look crazy. Out of all the photos, they picked the one where I look cross-eyed, where my smile was wonky, and I just look like I got 10,000 teeth in my mouth, girl. Um, the outfit I like. The face, not so much. What are your thoughts? Well, girl, I think you do have a $10,000 smile and it looks incredible. I actually love your face. I think your makeup is super laid and drag and over the top. I think for me, what's not really working in this look is that, <laughs> well, for, if we're being real, I think for me, what's not really looking at this work is the hair. I feel like the hair is too puffy. Like, I just feel like I love the outfit. Like you said, the big puffy sleeves, the great pop of neon green. I love the shoes. I just think the hair doesn't feel as current 
as the makeup and as the outfit. Like the hair is a different era. In my defense, the hair department. Um. <laughs> you better tell the truth, girl, I know. All right, next up is your entrance look, an iconic entrance look and an iconic moment. Come on, season six, let's get sickening. And I believe you did really well in the challenge where y'all had to jump from like a million miles high into a bunch of foams. And I think you look great. You got the yellow, you got the plaid, you got the feathers. So my critique of myself when it comes to this look is the necklace. I feel like the necklace is giving me very Jocelyn Fox, the necklace she wore on my season. Like it's just like a pageant necklace. <laughs> I don't really feel like that was fully thought out. I just knew I needed something on my neck, so I threw a bunch of necklaces on. But I like the look. I stand by the look. The shoes were my favorite. I loved the ostrich feathers, and we actually had rhinestone the ostrich feathers on, so they were like really great shoes. And of course, I love the classic headpiece. So stand by the look, but the accessory of the neck was a no for me. Should we just skip this video? We're gonna hate everything about ourselves. I love this video. I'm having fun. Let's let it roll. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Up next, we have Miss Yuha's reveal look, honey, and she is giving me the drama. I actually am obsessed. I love the makeup. I really love those like crazy 3D paper lashes. I know you're kind of known for doing that, so I really love that you stuck to that. I love the color choice. I think the blue is really popping off your skin oh. and the black hair is quaffed to the gods. She's got props, she's got gloves, she's giving us leg. I mean, I think you look great, gal. I think I look great too. Now, I think during your season, y'all didn't have the reveal looks. So it's still kind of relatively new during my season. So when they said that we're doing reveal looks, I'm like, what are you talking about? So I just pulled an outfit from my closet, popped it on and walked out as my reveal look. And literally this outfit, I kid you not, was from AliExpress for $24. <laughs> but it's the way you styled it and the way you did drag with it. I think it looks really good and oh, I love the you. Asian reference. It kind of reminds me of uh, this like twall print that my parents had in their bedroom that was blue and white. It's very classic, very chic. Oh, thank you. Okay, next up is your dancing with the stars. You got legs, baby. You got the tool, you got the hair, you got the makeup, you got the corset. Maybe a different hair, I would say. Can you tell us a little bit more about this look though? Yeah, so this was the look that we had to make and I was giving Dancing with the Stars, so I ended up using a disco ball and ripping off all the mirrored pieces and gluing it to the corset. And I think that's probably the only really good thing on this piece. Now, I remember loving this look when it came down and when they read me being like, wait, what? I look so sickening, how dare you? But as I look back, I see the proportions are a little unique. I do love the rhinestone headpiece. I think that's really, really cool. But mama, I'm literally wearing a wedge. Like, I think this is probably the only time in my life that I wore a wedge and I just can't even believe it's on television and like commemorated for forever. So yeah, not my favorite, but I don't totally hate it because I know where I was going with it. Now, have you seen any of the looks since your season? When was the last time you looked at your looks from Drag Race? Honestly, girl, I don't go walking down memory lane when it comes to RuPaul's Drag Race season six. I really don't. I've stayed away from re-watching it. Um, so it's probably been many years since I've <laughs> re-evaluated myself. Okay. All right, you go with me. Okay. Is this what you made? Yeah, a dragon and a die. Up next is Yuha making a sickening outfit that I live for. Are you kidding me? I can't believe you made this. This looks so amazing. Honestly, I love that you created a really, really cool headpiece. I think that that absolutely made the look go from just good to great because otherwise it would have been more of a simplistic dress. You were kind of giving us fringe with the caution tape. The way that you created that onk on your headpiece, it really gives it that drag. I love the way you're cinched in at the waist. Looks like you've got some little caution wristbands and matching earrings. And you know I love matching print on matching print on matching print. And yeah, I think you look iconic. Oh, thank you so much. I think I did great in this challenge to not to my own horn. 
Um, the headpiece originally, the inspiration was from Teletubby because I wanted to be futuristic. I wanted to be like the end of the world, but also at the same time, I wanted to be childish. But somehow, they got the reference of an Ankh and it somehow went there. Now, what I would change about this, I would bring the neckline just a little bit lower. But originally, it was a little bit lower, but we brought it up a little bit just because the microphone was a little bit too high. So I pulled it up a little bit higher to hide the microphone. But now, doing more TV, I think that I would have pulled it down and would have told production, I need the microphone pushed down so I can show my cleavage. I kind of wish you had a black pump. I think the nude definitely elongates your leg, but I think a pop of black and maybe some yellow on your eye. Do you have yellow on your eye? Yeah, it's, you can't really see it, yeah. Maybe some yellow glitter on that eye, mama. Now, when I made this dress, I was thinking, what would RuPaul wear? What would I make that would make her impressed? And I know watching Drag Race for many seasons is that she loves gowns, she loves something that flows, she loves something that has movement, she loves showing her arms, because she's got beautiful arms and legs. So I thought, wow, let's make something according to mother's taste. And I guess it worked. I absolutely see your inspiration of mother there. I mean, totally, it is definitely her silhouette. And yeah, you look great. Thank you, sister. Next up is your best drag look. And girl, we are bootleg queens and we love putting things on our head, girl. <laughs> Why are you laughing? And we love putting things on our head, girl. How's your head, sis? It's very cheap. <laughs> it's on sale today. I like the butterflies on the head. I like the short haircut that goes along with this so that we see the butterflies on the head and also the collar. I think it worked back then during season six, but I think during season 13 and All-Stars now, the taste and fashion have changed. Yeah, I agree. This was actually Alyssa Edwards' dress that I had my designer refurbish and make even more over the top. I do think the collar piece is really beautiful. However, I think the dress was still a little bit large and needed to be snatched in more at the waist. And I wish the bottom of the train would have been much fuller. It feels a little bit sad, a little bit two ply instead of, you know, 420 ply. I do love though that I went for that 1920s makeup with the big rounded arched brow, the very short finger waved hair, and of course the headpiece inspired by the one and only Alexander McQueen. So I definitely still love this look, but I hear what you're saying and I agree. In today's standards, it's just okay. But back then, fabulous. Next up, we have Miss Yuha serving us entrance room, work room, realness, baby. She's giving us the classic look, okay? Now, I like the kimono, but for me, the belt just really sticks out. I feel like the blackness of the belt does kind of bring in the blackness of the hair, but I kind of wish she would have gone with like a golder belt to pick up those gold details and all of the writing that's on the actual kimono. But again, I love the hair. I think your hair and makeup as all always is quaffed, is drag, is done well. I love the accessories and the hair. And I do think you are really serving us classic Yuha, which is what you want to give when you're entering the workroom. Oh, thank you, baby. I didn't even realize this Laganja. You just made me see something that I didn't see for many years is the black around the waist. I always thought it was fine, but now that you mentioned it, you're kind of right. It's kind of bold. It kind of stands out a little bit too much from the gold and the red accents. And I think you're right. Maybe like a bronze, like a really dark gold. I think it would have done better. You're right, girl. We're educating each other, girl. On the dress, it is stoned. And the inspiration for this dress was that I was on SNL, not SNL, what's it called? SNL with Katy Perry, and that's where the look it came from. And I think that what a better way to just to show myself during the entrance. And maybe you might have over accessorized. Are there a lot of necklaces going on? <laughs> I was inspired by Jocelyn Fox, girl. <laughs> Next up is your Tony Award dress look, baby. And I see the reference of Alexander McQueen with the bird on your head again. I think this is beautiful. And we see the lace at the top and the ruffles at the bottom. And of course, you got your clutch. This by far was my favorite look that I served on season six. This was for the Tony Awards. And because the rusical was so long, they literally showed this look for like two seconds. I'm like, great, my best look and we didn't even see it. I had long human hair down to my butt, which Vivian Pinay let me borrow. This was a dress that was actually bought for me by a bud of mine, online friend, who helped me out when I was really obviously super struggling back then. And we rhinestoned every single layer of that train. Now, of course, it's black rhinestones on black, so it doesn't really show up on TV, but when you see this dress in person, it is truly still a masterpiece. Now, I will let you know, we've actually changed this dress up 
since season six and now the whole top is see-through with buckles so it's very kind of s and -y. but i still loved the bottom of the dress and so that's why we kept it and kind of did an homage to this look now, one other thing I do want to say about this look is Lady Gaga was known for wearing this exact headpiece, but I did technically wear it first. We filmed in 2013 and she was seen wearing it in 2014 before my episode aired. But hey, shout out to Bobby Webster who supplied the hat, my incredible friend who unfortunately is no longer with us on this earth, but styled me for the show. I truly do think it's such a special piece. Okay. All right, this is best track. <laughs> what the f was that? Why are you laughing? <laughs> Not this is your best drag, sis. We were told something else. I'll get into the tea, girl. Well, up next, we've got Yuha's best drag. Um, you know, for me, sis, I don't think I'm in love with this one. I feel like there's a lot going on. I think maybe the tights. It's the tights for me. The tights are a lot of information. We got the ruffle. We got the sequence, the flowers in her hair. I mean, it's definitely drag. I just don't know if it's the best. <laughs> Two teas about this look, okay? Two teas. The first tea is that we were told a different category for this runway. We were told So I thought I'm a little bit old school. I'm like, cause that's how I learned drag was from the queens that came before <laughs> me. Very drag, 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 drag. Whereas now it mixes with art and fashion, right? So that's where the inspiration came from with the ruffle reveal coat, with the leotard, with the flowers. It was overly accessorized, but it was all in the same colors. Again, we were told. And the second T is that I said, which one do you think I should wear? And they said this. I was like, you sure? They said, yeah, wear that. A bunch of people helped me pick this outfit, girl. <laughs> Would I have worn this for my best drag look? No. But it was the past. It was the past, and it's still a fun look. I mean, you absolutely look like you're having a great time out there, and you look like a powerful drag queen. So at the end of the day, you did hit the mark. Next is your night of a thousand RuPaul's, honey, and you're giving RuPaul with the hair and bodysuit and with pink, honey, because we all know pink and purple is RuPaul's favorite color, and I definitely see the hair. This is a little bit of the house of Edwards, that kind of thick, poofy hair and drag, and, and your body is looking gorgeous. I mean, this one's okay for me. I girl, I was trying to be nice, girl. <laughs> Okay, I was like, I definitely agree with the judges now that the hair is more Lady Bunny than it is RuPaul. I mean, girl, I got this style that Hollywood wigs, my girl, it's just like very like, I remember thinking it was so sickening, it's so big, it's so turnt, and now when I look at it, I'm like, ooh, look at that hard front, girl, she's hard. You know, I liked the bodysuit, it was made by Marco Marco, I was trying to give the RuPaul reference when she was in the whole gold bodysuit, I can't remember what season that was. Season four. I liked that I chose a different silhouette for her, but yeah, no, I'm gonna have to say this one's a no for me. Okay, next is the acting challenge. Girl, what is coming out of your face? <laughs> we were supposed to be ugly. All yeah. right, well, Yuha turned it for this one, baby. She gave you ugly! Mama, she's got the T-strap shoes. She's got pimples. She's got unibrow. I mean, the hair looks nice, though. The hair is cute. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it, girl. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, the inspiration from this look is that when I watched a lot of Chinese TV shows, that when they talked about being ugly, what I saw was like wars with like hair coming out, extra blood, really big lips. That's where I drew the inspiration from. But yeah, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Okay, Ooh. next up is your crazy, sexy, cool look. Wow, wow, wow. Very chainy, very studs, very rock and roll, very punk. Are you a motorbike girl? No, but I love to ride on the back of bikes with boys. I still like this look, you know? I think maybe that critique I was giving you earlier about the tights being too much, I'm kind of feeling that here. I think I wish I had stuck with more just a regular fishnet, but this is literally one of those stripper outfits that you buy in a box for $20. So I thought that that was like a good base, you know? You could kind of see like by the armpits where the strings are like attached to the whole bodysuit. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, but I love the jacket. I still own this jacket to this day. I mean, we used every piece of broken jewelry I had on this look and I think it looks super cool. I love the hair. It's super fun and super 80s. The earrings, I still have those to this day. Super cool mirrored skulls with rhinestones on them. I definitely got rid of the leotard because that one 
little tiny strap. I got over that fantasy because I don't pad anymore. But I do think it looks cool. I mean, the shoes had guns on them and I pulled them up backwards and blew them out. So come on, she turned it for this. All right, this is my reunion look. Yes. Now I will never forget your reunion look, sister. This was definitely an iconic moment because, well, it was very memorable. And you know how I feel. I've set it up on the show every single time. If you're not memorable, mama, you're not doing drag. And this for me absolutely took me to a place, to a fantasy. It was different. It was unexpected. Your makeup was perfect. I mean, girl, you were Ringu for sure. Oh, thank you. I knew that I wanted to go in with a memorable look because I know I didn't last too long in the season. I didn't win, but I knew I wanted to stand out. And I thought, wow, I know that everybody's going to be pretty. What a better way to stand out than to not be pretty. So my friend had the idea, why don't you just dress up as this kid from The Grudge? And I did it, and then I had Robin Slovina from Skim Wars did the makeup, and she did a fabulous job. And I'm really proud of this look. Yeah, I think how we were looking at your one ugly look before, and it was kind of like, okay, girl, she really took it there. Like, this is how you do ugly, but still make it fashion and beautiful, too. Beautiful ugly. Aw, thank you, baby. Next up is, it's kind of a dry eye. Kind of like your... Vagina mama. <laughs> I'm having PTSD. This look is iconic, girl. This is look is iconic. <laughs> this look is iconic, girl. Um, Do I like it? No, but it's iconic. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to sashay away. I mean, look, you know what? Parts of it are good, okay? Parts of it. If you took it apart, it's good. But when it's all together, girl, it is a clown and tree mess. Now, it was the comedic challenge, so I thought clown and over the top. The tutu, girl, I don't even know why. I was obsessed with tutus for years. I guess because I come from the dance world and I just thought like tutu, super cute, but no. I liked the corset. I liked the jacket. I sold both pieces, so obviously I didn't really love them. The shoes were too small and hurt me, so definitely got rid of those too. I mean, yeah, I don't think I... I own anything from this look, but I like the belt by itself. <laughs> have you seen the edits online where you're saying your jokes, but like the audience members are laughing? Have you seen that edit? I have seen that edit and I think it's the truth because it was funny. <laughs> it's kind of dry. <laughs> so I went to Valencia. <laughs> I was good, 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 okay, okay. Hey, 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 put your lighters up. And there was another edit where you just kind of say your joke and you just kind of walked away and the audience just started clapping. <laughs> hey, at the end of the day, like you said, it may not be the best look, but it's memorable. Uh-huh. Next up, we have Yuha's feather look. And again, Mama is turning it. This is another look that I absolutely remember from you. I mean, it's just so well done. The feathers on the gown, amazing. The birds coming off your shoulder, so cool. And then the neon red hair to pop it all. I mean, it's just a great look from head to toe. Oh, thank you. I liked it too. The judges didn't really get the red hair, but I just thought, wow, it kind of pops. I thought that I could have done a little bit better job with this. So the collar is supposed to pop up, but it fell down as I was walking down the runway. Well, yeah, kind of like how when you did the entrance look and you had that black belt on the red, but it didn't really work. I feel like this is the opposite. I feel like the red is really working here and telling a story. Could I have done more going back? Yes. Was it the best that I've done at that time? It was the best that I can afford. Because we all know feathers is really expensive. And this is one of the looks that I think you can't really pull off with drag on a dime or like a really minimum budget because they wanted feathers from head to toe and that was the assignment. Okay. Next up is your black and white. The nails, girl. The nails. Those are like gladiator nails, mama. Yes, 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 yes. No, 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 no. This is my worst look for sure. Again, I love that I tried to be creative and take it out of the box. I did like fishnet technique on my eyes. I remember like I had no brows. I mean, I had this huge train. This outfit's actually made out of a parachute. So it did get a great flow on the runway, but it was very ill-fitting. Like Michelle said, the crotch was too low. It, it just wasn't good. It wasn't good. But I tried. I like that it was different. I like the idea. It's the execution for me that definitely fell short. But it is black and white, though. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have Miss Yuha's finale look. Now, Mama, there is a lot going on here. Not gonna lie. I love the headpiece. The headpiece is gorgeous. I mean, it looks so traditional. It looks literally like it came out of a storybook. I love it. 
I really like the leotard a lot. It looks like there's a lot of detail on that. Beautiful colors, tones of red and gold. I think for me, the cape is almost swallowing you. I mean, we always talk about a lining and I do love that it's lined, but I think maybe if it had actually just been lined in a darker color or all of that fabric, like again, you'd have to have double the sequin, which is very hard. It's just like my eye can't focus on one thing. There's a lot to take in here. But again, your makeup, your hair, always flawless. I love that you're giving classic Yuha. I love this ginormous fan in your hand. That's amazing. So there's a lot I like. I just think overall, it is a lot. It's a lot. Speaking of the fan, I was supposed to enter the workroom with the fan, but the airport didn't let me through with it. So then I told production, I was like, can you get me a fan from China Channel or something before the next day before we enter the workroom? So they sent a white girl with blonde hair around Chinatown just looking for a fan. I mean, they must have thought that she was crazy in Chinatown, but eventually she got me a parasol. We ended up using the parasol instead. I like this look, I enjoyed it. I think it spoke to who I am. A fun fact for those who are watching about this look is that I made it the night before we flew out to film the finale because I still wasn't sure what I was gonna wear. So I think I did a pretty good job on it though. Next up is your finale look, baby, giving us Ice Princess Goddess. Yeah, I'm really still very proud of this look. I feel like I really came back to the reunion and showed people how I glued up and that I had... No, it's glued up, mama. That's when you glow up and you grow up. You I know, I was emphasizing on it because I remember okay. you saying it in the last pit stop and also in bootleg the before. Now, I loved the kooky hair. Oh, stop calling me. I loved the kooky hair because it was so different for me and a lot of people gave me that I was like Dracula-esque, but I think it's super cool. I love how everything is iridescent. I look wet. I love that beautiful shimmery purple cape. And I've definitely kept this piece, although it has been refurbished and kind of reinvented over the years. Well, did you have a good time looking over each other's looks from Drag Race? Yes, sister, this was really fun. And honestly, I think we both, especially for being bootleg, really turned it on our seasons. I think we did too. And just a reminder that your season was almost a decade ago and mine was half a decade ago. And I think that for what we did, during the time and the money and the experience and also the lack of drag out there. I think we did pretty good. Wow, thanks for reminding me. No, I'm just making it up, girl. I'm just gonna make both of us feel better, girl. No, it was almost a decade, you're right. Was it almost a decade? It was 2012. 2013 is when we filmed. 14 was when it aired. Okay, which one is your least favorite look for yours or mine? My least favorite look from me is definitely my black and white lizard Laganja Estranja look. That's my least favorite. And for you, my least favorite look would be your best drag. <laughs> <laughs> yes, honey, bootleg the house down, baby. Do you really trust our opinions knowing the fact that this is how we did on Drag Race? <laughs> Are we in any position, girl? Are we in any position, girl? Talk about representation, girl. This is the representation we're giving the community. Um, my least favorite look uh, from you, there's a lot to choose from. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> My least favorite look from you is Dancing with the Stars. To me, that was just a corset with panties and a piece of fabric. Well, it was, so I fully understand. And what about for yourself? What is your least favorite look of yours? My... <laughs> My... <laughs> Let's move on to you, sweetie. My least... <laughs> Sweaty. My least favorite look from myself is my best drag as well. It was definitely not my best drag. And if I was told that we were gonna do something else, I would have done something different. Now, this is a question from one of my Patreon members. Now, if you were to go back technically onto All Stars, which look would you want to have a redemption of? I would really love to have a redemption on my butterfly look. I think because that look was so close to being really amazing, I'd love to have a second stab at it. I would like to have a best drag redemption look. Anything, girl, would have been better than that, girl. So anything from my closet. Well, I guess this show's called Bootleg for a reason, girl. Well, Laganja, thank you so much for providing your bootleg opinions on my looks and your looks on bootleg opinions today. The content that nobody asked for, but we're gonna give it anyway. And where can we find you? Well, thank you so much as always, sister, for having me. You can find me at Laganja Astranja, except for on TikTok where I'm the only Laganja Astranja. And if y'all enjoyed our bootleg opinions, our Venmo's in our PayPal's and the links are in the description below. 
support bootleg pandemic drag. And my name is Yuwa Masaki. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube under Yuwa Masaki. Bye, Ganja. Bye, sister. And I'll check out the GoFundMe in the link in the description below. We're continuing to raise money. With your help, we can help change the lives of others.